Good afternoon, everybody. We're here for segment number three with my guys, the other two of the three amigos. Mike, how you doing, my friend? Oh, wonderful, man. I look forward to this topic. This is an important one. This could this could save people and help them. So uh, I look forward to learning from both of you. It could do both. Uh, well, we'll we certainly will see. And Dion, how you doing, sir? Howdy. Doing great. I love how just before the video, you said, let's make a quick video on this topic. You named the topic. And I'm like, how do you make that quick? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can make it quick. So the topic of this video is going into a housing depression. What is the one strategy that we would do? And what is the one strategy that we would run from? So Dion, I will give you a first shot at this one, my friend. What's the one that you do? Let's do that one first. We're on limited time, so we'll keep it short. I'll be as brief as possible because I kind of touched on this in video one today. Sure. I would invest exactly how I did if I even had to start over and do it again now. I would keep my properties in small multifamily instead of a 10 unit in one place that's drawing tenants from all one source, possibly spread out more than 10 miles apart next to several economic drivers. So a base, a port, a college, hospital, Boeing, Amazon, big company near you, a large population. And then I would diversify the tenant base. So one third military, one third section eight, one third working or retired, trying not to have any one group of tenants that can be impacted by something like a prolonged government shutdown, pandemic or stock market crash, just decimate, decimate the entire portfolio. So that's the strategy I would use as succinct as I can put it. Mike. The strategy I would avoid, yeah. and it, man, that's hard to pick because right now there's there's two and I don't want to take both because one might be Mike's. No, do it. Take them both. All right. So the first one, Burr. I would avoid Burr at all costs right now, unless it was all my capital right? and I didn't have to refinance and I could at some point in the future to possibly benefit from it. But if you're using hard money or short money, I wouldn't touch a Burr right now because one, I don't have the skill set. If you've done 20 or 30 and you have a system down and a massive portfolio to support it, sure. But first to fifth deal, not so much. But the real one I would avoid right now in this kind of market is syndications. I don't want to give up the control. I don't want to see projections like the ones you sent us a picture of of 67% oh, that's IRR. Crazy. Right? Like, like, why not 70? Like, right. even a 5% IRR isn't something I think I would support right now because they're projecting rent growth and interest rate expectations that neither one of those, we know what's going to happen. So those are my, sorry, two that I would avoid. The project hadn't broken ground yet. Yeah, and that's that was nuts. Like, yes. come on, sixty-seven percent. Come on. All right, Michael, you're you're two good one, bad one. Uh, so the good one. Uh, again, I if you watch my stuff, you should hopefully be able to guess this. I'm going for seller financing, low down payment. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I have an, I have. If you've watched my channel, you know we put some capital away for a rainy day for exactly what is occurring. My intention is to use that most expeditiously as I can. For me, that means nothing more than 10% down. I will be trying 50, 40, 10s, 90% seller financing. I'm direct marketing. I'm telling agents my buy box is 10% down or less, cash flow day one, 30 year debt, rock and roll. Uh, again, I don't need every deal. I just need two, three, four. I'll be happy. So that's what I am doing. Uh, and again, that'll explode my yield uh, if we can do things like that. So that's 90% that's of what I'm doing the next two years. The things to avoid, I want to hit it again. There's two I will hit the bad ones. One is a repeat, as it should be, because it is so stupid today, and that is Burr. Yeah. If you are doing Burr and using anyone else's capital, your friends, your moms, your you know aunts, uncles, neighbors, coworkers, hard money, you're an idiot. Just dumb. The the LTVs are changing. The risk capital is changing. The the declining appraisal. It's just bad. Just stupid. Oh, uh, and it, it, it and in, in just to kind of push a, a chat, something that happened on my channel yesterday, Thatch, who, oh, by the way, is a Burr proponent, right? He has a shirt that he always wears, says Burr. He's like, Michael, you're right. Don't touch that Burr. You got to do Burr different today. Uh, not this kind of, you know, how they write it in the book. So Burr, uh, as Dion said, is it's foolish today. And then the second one uh, is flipping above the median, right? If you're going to play in a housing market that is slowing down, and uh, with the move up buyers or ghosts and all of these things are going on, it is very, very foolish uh, to play above the median. Not that you can't do it. It's just the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's so risky today. And thankfully, all the amazing uh, flippers who I have on my channel are saying, no, we got smaller, we got tighter, closer to home. 
uh, we're assuming this, we're assuming that, uh, and all of them are below the median. So those are the two things that I think are, are, are just, just bad ideas today, uh, in my market. So I agree. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Why? Because I can, it's my show. That, and so my favorite strategy actually for the next probably 12 to 24 months is a massive expansion of my units with section eight and housing vouchers. That's, Karen. that is, uh, I would not have guessed that if I had a hundred guesses, because if we go back 45 days, you were, Michael, yeah. I hate this thing. I really do. I really, I, there's many things I don't like about it, but my job in a very tough, what I believe to be a very tough economy Amen. is preservation of capital. And so in the interest of preservation of capital, I will align with a guaranteed check over the hope of a check that might be 15% higher. Yeah. You are never, uh, you know, having 30, 40% of your uh, cash show up on the first or the 31st is uh, not a bad thing. Nope. And that's the thing is it's preservation of capital. And the best way to do that is to get into that more uh, is to get in a more meaningful way into that, into that space. So smart. Um, so what's, smart. I appreciate that. What's, but the, the, the other part that was the catalyst for that was the larger FMRs and then the 10% override. So uh, now it's a smaller gap to yeah, say gap no to, right. And now it's like, if the difference is 150 bucks, I'd rather help somebody than have all of my yeah. units market. Help but, somebody, guaranteed income. Exactly. Yep. The two go hand in hand. And the strategy that I would absolutely 1000% stay away from, because I don't care how many disclosures there are, everything that has to be in there is probably still not in there. And I think we are going to see more class action lawsuits against syndicators in the next 12 to 18 months than we've seen ever, ever. It's going, going to, be, to be a lot. All those accredited investors that all have amazing attorneys, they're just going to go. So I have to put how much in and we get the best guy on the block. Yeah, I'm going to throw in for that. Let's go do this thing. And so I think that there's some guys that take some pretty big falls. I'm interested to see because I think the top three syndicators out there probably, um, probably Ken McElroy is probably in the top three. Grant's probably in the top three. I don't know who the other third would be. I mean, maybe, maybe Brandon after these couple, I mean, cause those are some pretty big ones. Um, I think that it's going to be very interesting to see what their business looks like in 18 to 24 months. And maybe I'm wrong, but I certainly would like to learn how I was wrong. So maybe I recalculate next time. Yeah. It, it's funny when you look at this, I can't speak to any of their portfolios, um, but a couple, like two of those names, the first two you mentioned, I think the way they're structured Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably going to be okay. Uh, but I think, I think it's the, I actually think it's the syndicators who got in in the last three years who got lucky with timing and then frankly got greedy and stupid. But what if it's the guys that, so for me as an example, right, I ran it based on the numbers and it wasn't narrow margin. It wasn't a three cap rate. Like we're still talking, I was just doing the best deals I've ever done based on where the market was, what the rate was. And so I look at it and it's, you know, those 20% plus returns. Sure. I look at it for them and say a lot of their portfolios, I know Grant's basically doubled. Yeah, I'm sure it has. He's basically yeah. doubled and he did or, that or more, in, the, probably. in the last yeah. two or three years. So is yeah. all that debt in that new school that you're talking about that? Well, it, it depends on the structure of the debt. I can only go based on what I've heard. Sure. I don't Understood. know anything. Understood. I don't have, I'm not a part of the syndication. Sure. Uh, it appears based on what I've heard is all his debt structure is long-term best rates. He is so big. He can get Fannie and Freddie. True. To do. True. That's why I think the biggest of the biggest are going to be fine. It'll be slower. They may not be able to give quite the returns that they want, but I think I think they have so much escape velocity that they will be fine. It's the tier below that who got lucky with timing, who doubled and tripled their head count. Yeah. They're done. It's funny. Done. That, it's funny that Grant actually says the issue that he had in the 08 crash. Exactly. He wasn't really big enough. He wasn't big. Enough. Now yeah. he's a billion dollars. Like when you owe a billion dollars, the bank has the problem. Right. He's he's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to be. I'm. I mean, he'll have some pain. It'll be uncomfortable. Smart as, yeah, smart he'll as be hell. Fine. Yeah, he'll he's be smart fine. as hell and amazing, amazing maneuverable uh, maneuverability. So I have. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. So, uh, Zoom, tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. One rental at a time. If you'd like to ask me a question, it's 8 a.m. Saturdays. I only do 60 minutes, so get on early because uh, the last three or four months I have not been able to answer all questions. And I apologize for that. Success has its downside. Dion, my friend, how can everybody find you? So the one takeaway that I'm hoping people get from this video isn't that when we talk about crypto versus stocks, stocks versus real estate, we talked about what we would do and what we would avoid. That means that based on risk and and what we see happening, we, we've made choices. That doesn't mean we don't think people are successful with stocks or crypto or syndications. There are people who are successful with that. And the mistake a lot of people make, especially newer investors, is we think of investing as a pie, and it's not a pie. You don't get your slice, and if you take more, someone else gets less, or someone else makes a billion dollars in crypto that you're going to make less money in real estate. The economy is a conveyor belt, not a pie. You reach out, you take out what you can, and I hope that the syndications do well. I hope they make a lot of money. I hope they get the return they're looking for. Yeah, It's not the risk I'm willing to take. 100%. Guys, thank you. So oh, were you go ahead. And you can find me right here on YouTube. I was going to say, you didn't finish. <laughs> as I always like to say, we create great content for you guys. Please hit that subscribe and that like button as well. Lumberjack Landlord, 1130 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday and likely with some special guest. Who knows who? But we'll be there. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll talk again soon. Ciao.